morning guys, how you doing? Today is Wednesday, September 4th, 2013. And I'm going to change a couple of um, 50 gallon low boy water heaters, electric, uh, down in the crawl space today. They're about 13 years old. And the homeowner, you know, he's, he don't really go down in the crawl space. And they're about at their life's end at 13 years. So I recommend that he change them. And that's all we're going to do, swap them out. So it's kind of like a four foot crawl space, three and a half, four feet. So it's a GI Joe job, is what I call hands and knees type of thing. So uh, it's going to take me a lot longer. I got to crawl in there and put all my stuff and crawl back type of thing. So I'll get some footage of this for sure. Uh, nobody going to be there. I had a great job yesterday I wanted to film. I had to change a well pump and tank. Uh, but the guy was retired and he wanted to watch me and help me and he was right there. I couldn't film it. Too bad because that was a great one. But that's all part for the course here in uh, video land, I guess. But yeah, uh, stay tuned. I'll, I'll get some shots of what I'm doing with this. Alright. Alright guys, 250 gallon electric water heaters in truck. Fit right in there. I usually only do one at a time, but two fit in there nicely. That's what's good about this truck. I can walk right in here. And uh, there's plenty of room. First thing I always do is put gloves on. That's the first thing I do before I even go in the house. Alright, guys. Yeah, the electrical panel. It's got a heat pump in this house. This is summer residence. This should be the hot water tank right here. One. And the other hot water tank. And we will check it downstairs before we touch the power. But we want to make sure the power's off to them electric water heaters. Got a little access port here. To get down in the basement. There's also another bulkhead that I gotta bring the water heaters in from, but this is like in the middle of the house type of thing. Get down there. Alright guys, I'm down here. This is a wonder water heaters. I got another one way down there, around the corner down there. I gotta change. And this is only like a crawl space down in here. And then this would be the access port coming in from the bulkhead. So I'm gonna have to bring my water heaters in up on this shelf. And then drag them in here. You know, I'm gonna, I got a little cot I can put them on and wheel them in here. But that one is gonna be a haul all the way down there. So basically, um... Got, I got the power off. I just took this cover off here. But um, yeah, we got hot and cold shutoffs here. So we'll shut these off. Hot and cold. And when I drain a water heater, I got this little pump set up. It's got a little washing machine hose on it to help me, you know, pull the water out of the heater quicker. Um, I'm open that up. And we'll turn that pump on. I'll just plug it in my drop light um, to drain the tank down quicker. Once I get it going, I'll pull this vacuum breaker off to let air in. And uh, I got my little electric meter here. I'll check to see if the power's the power's off. I got the two breakers off in the panel, but I like to always double check whatever I'm doing with electrical. Make sure that there's no power. Okay, no power there. Let's try the other one. No power. No power there. No power there. And you can see I got my little pigtail and I got the other one to the ground. So I'm good. That power's off. What I like about this little meter, I can stick it in my back pocket. You know, be on a go with it. Alright, so I got that open there. And plug this into my drop light. Can open this. Can open this right here. I only open this if I'm gonna replace them. And it's got a little 
up pump right there. It's just pumping into there. So I'll let this run. Install 2000. So it's 13 years old. If you tell my customers anything, 13, 14 year old water heater should be changed. It's a matter of time until it dies. I always change the vacuum breaker on the heater if I'm changing it. Especially down here in the crawl space, the guy's never down here and uh, he don't want a flood. So, if we want some change, we change them. And yeah, it's sucking in the air there. Get the vacuum breaker off, the whole pump's working. I got a cast iron pump also. This is kind of like a little cheap one. Um, but I do have a cast iron pump, but I got to prime that pump. I've been using this one for water heaters, it works okay. Drain it down a lot quicker. There, yeah, guys. Just a little, little tech tip here. If you got a, if you got a fitting that's really tight and you can't get a regular wrench on it, sometimes I'll use my basin wrench and I'll extend it out to get a long, a long grip on it. You can see it's really tight in there, and I can't get a pipe wrench on it to loosen up that fitting. So I was able to get my, my basin wrench in there and extend it out to get the torque I needed to get that fitting off of there. You can see it. Now, this thing's only as strong as this pin. So, sometimes if you're really yanking on it, I've had these, these break on me a few times, but in this situation, I had to do something to get that nipple out of there, and you can't grab the threads, obviously. You would, I wouldn't be able to use it again. So, that's a little tech tip. truck in the back that's where she lives whenever I need it it's there yeah, when you hear a squeal like that it's done empty. Yeah, come down. Look at this. Sucker's barely fitting in there. Through the access port. Barely. But it's gonna go. Alright guys, I was gonna use these fittings, but I can't. I took this nipple out of here. This dielectric nipple. And there was an anoid rod attached to it, so... I can't, I gotta reuse those connections, so I'll have to repipe this. Not a big deal. Some fittings here and some three quarter L. I'll repipe it. I'm gonna use these tank tees like this. Vacuum breaker will go right in the top, and then, you know, obviously, I'll put a female adapter here, solder a piece on, solder a piece on this. So you don't, you know, so I can pipe dope this and put some uh, Teflon tape on there so it doesn't burn type of thing. I'll get my, uh, I'll get it prepped and then I'll show you how it's piped off and I'll show you as I'm soldering. You don't want to use the um, the pipe with the red. That's strictly heating. I'll let that cool and I'll cut a piece off. And I'll solder my female adapter. I'm just going to go on the other side. Copper by female. You want to make those cuts, you know, maybe four, four, four or five inches. So once that's cool, you can screw that on. It's not going to heat that, that thread up. You know, because it'll be piped open and went on there. You don't want to do that.
play a proper joint. And that's, you know, put the cider in. This is the coal, and that's the hot. And I'll probably back it around and pipe it off into this. What I like to do is I put Teflon tape. I always want to put it on clockwise. Put it on tape. Whenever there's copper, I like to use the Teflon tape plus the pipe dope. That's what I like to do. And I like to use this. There's a couple of different kind. I like to use um, this Blue Magics. is decent stuff. There's a couple other ones I like using. You know, if you ever get your pipe open, it gets all hot inside. You can take some mineral oil and mix it in there and uh, soften it up. Let me screw that on. Teflon and the pipe dope. It ain't gonna leak. It shouldn't anyway. I wanna make sure it's tight because I did loosen up that nipple to change it. I wanna make sure that, that nipple's nice and tight, which it is. Alright, guys, I got a pipe to you. Um, there was a couple in here that I had popped off on a cold water side, if you remember how it was piped off. I had some of these cast cast brass fittings in the truck. This is what a copper elbow looks like. These are the, the cast brass ones look like. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just a little bit older. I had some old stock. This is what a brass fitting would look like. You know, it's solid, just like, just like this is. But I'm just going to use them up. So basically the cold water is coming down two elbows. I gotta solder this up. And then on the hot, I popped that coupling off. I added another coupling on elbow. I ran over with a swing joint. And then, you know, I already soldered this piece into the female. Um, pipe dope and Teflon on the threads. So what I'll do is I'll solder these two up. And then I'll solder up these other fittings. And then I'll be able to turn the water on. I got it off right here on the hot and the cold the head ball valves here. So let's see if I could um get my camera going here so you guys can see me soldering. See if I get a close up on it for you. Pull the 
flame off. If the solder goes in like that, see it's hot enough. Plenty more in there, it's just gonna go inside the pipe. And and it's just gonna run out. So that's it, it's done. Wanna cool a bit? I'm gonna put my female, my uh, vacuum breaker in here. And I'll be in my relief valve. No relief valve, no vacuum breaker, and I'll be good. Again, this relief valve comes with the water heater. In my state, if the relief valve is going in the top of the tank, which this one's coming out the side, you need a long 8 inch um, stem on this. This is only a 4 inch relief valve. This is okay in the side of the tank, but not going in the top. This tank has a tap on the side, so I'm good.
they call a TNP valve. Temperature and pressure relief valve. That's what it's called. I'll put a pipe wrench on that. All my pipe wrenches are aluminum. They go from 10 inch all the way to 3 feet. Oh, I only have aluminum ones. I started When I first started, I had the metal ones, all rigid uh, stuff, but so much lighter with the aluminum ones. Alright, it's all tightened up. I got my piece, you're gonna be you know, within 12 inches to the, of the floor. So for some reason, if this thing mal malfunctions and it gets too hot, or there's too much pressure in the tank, this thing will open. It's a safety. It's a safety. You know, and never open this up. If this is an old tank, and you want to see if there's water in the tank, and you open this to blow some water out, or to see if there's water in there, and this, there's a gasket in here. And the thing is, usually they get all mucked up, or you get some dirt in there that's cracked. You'll have to change it. So never play with that. If it's brand new, um, yeah, you can open it to let the air out when you're filling it if you wanted to. I do that, but only when it's new. Alright, I'm gonna put, do the vacuum breaker next. Again, got flown. Let's put it on clockwise. Couple, about three turns. Take a rag. A little, a little pipe dope on here. Pipe dope is more of a lubricant to help it go in. There's brass to brass to brass. You know, sometimes it'll bind up. Uh, that's what you need right there. The only thing I gotta do now is. Fill it, check for leaks, and um, look up the wiring. Right. Notice when I did my pipe and I made sure none of the handles were going to hit. That's the cold filling. Well, if there was any leaks, you'd hear it hissing. Another thing I like to do too is I always write the date on the tank because this is a six this is a six year heater. I always write the date. That's what I do. So you know if, if it's within the six years and it's leaking. You know it's on the warranty. Another thing, guys. You never want to turn this electric onto this water heater unless it's full of water. You'll burn these elements right out of here. There's two elements in here. You have to get all the air out. Best thing to do is go to a tub and bleed all the air out. Once you get in a good flow, then you could turn it on. Getting all the air out of it. It's open just on hot. Wash it and make sure it's not rusty. Then you can shut it off. Alright, she's full. I don't see anything leaking. Wiped all the joints down good with my rag. Basically, you're wiping it down to get the flux off. Because that's what will turn green is the flux. But just double check. Everything's wiped off good. I'm full of water here. All I gotta do is uh, have this electrical tied in here and I'll be good to go with this one. And I got another one to do down there. The next one to do.
Alright guys, I put the insulation on that hot water line the best I could, whatever I had here, so that's as good as it's going to get. I'm going to start on the other one now, put my pump on it and drain it. In the meantime, I'll get this other one out to the truck. This is the old one here. And bring the new one in.